Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a, uh, a trade that went for a thousand pips. I had um, done the analysis a few weeks ago, and I'll go over uh, really the trade idea, the technicals uh, behind it. And um, in, in in this video now, I just want to you know say outright, you know, I didn't say it was going to go for a thousand pips, but you know, at the end of the day, nobody knows how far a trade will go or with any individual trade will actually work out, right? Single trade, no one knows. You can have a, a really good trade set up technically, fundamentally, and it might go against you, right? But that's not the point. It's really, you know, the, the aim and objective of trading is really to uh, follow the process and, um, you know, good risk management, good risk reward, and when you're right to capitalize on those trades, right? So it doesn't even really matter about win rates. You know, retail traders get hung up on things like win rates all the time, and it really has nothing to do with even win rates. So in, in so far as just understanding that when you're right, try to win as big as possible. But um, the Australia, it was on the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And um, yeah, I had I had made a, created a video on the uh, March the 7th for the private members uh, group. I generally do a technical analysis video, not the one that I uh, do for YouTube, um, but I, I generally do one for the uh, the uh, the members group. And uh, I was saying at the time, uh, pointing out at a time on the 7th when I did the analysis that we were waiting for prices to really come down into this zone here before looking at a, uh, a long trade. Now, before I get into the technicals, I just want to put, I guess, everything in, into you know the context. And the context really uh, in our group is, is understanding uh, the fundamentals first, right, and the risk sentiment and why you want to buy a currency and why would you would want to sell a currency, right? Because this is uh, the way that the market works it's not you know driven by technical analysis and i don't want to uh, make it into a polarizing debate because ultimately to get to to make the best decisions really we should be combining both right both fundamentals and technicals but for me it starts with the fundamental analysis now um in our Discord group, we've got uh, uh, several channels. You know, you can scroll through, etc. For those of you who are in it, you'll know. But those of you who are not, um, one of the sections we have is fundamental analysis, and we look at bank analysis, resources, and research. But we also uh, post news articles, right? And um, Australia, right? So you can go literally go back through this if you want to, if you ever join. Um, but uh, you can look at you know the the what hap what is happening over um you know uh, a, a certain period of time uh, by looking at um, certain news articles and then looking at what happened on the on the price charts right so uh one of the articles i posted on the 1st of march right here was from pound sterling live and um uh, you know in a risk off environment generally traders will typically you know buy safe haven currencies like the japanese yen and the swiss franc um but we in the group were looking at buying the australian dollar um because really every uh um i guess risk event should be treated differently right yes typically we know what what happens and things like that but we need to keep our finger on the pulse and like i said every risk off event is shouldn't be treated the same it shouldn't be a case of oh well you know risk off we got to buy you know um uh, uh, the japanese yen and, and the swiss franc there's there's a bit more to it than that anyways so the idea and it's just again the reason why i point out that it's the first of march because just to show you that it i did this before the analysis and i'm going to go into even the video as well uh, that i do did for the uh, for the members uh, about buying the uh, or th the reason why I was looking to buy the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen, right? So uh, we've got several things highlighted here, and um, surging natural gas prices followed the commencement of full scale invasion, right? So we knew that we were you know in a risk off um, uh, environment, but because of um, uh, what was happening natural gas prices uh, was boosting the value of australia's most third important export commodity right and supports the country's t 
terms of trade. So Australia is a net energy export or liquefied natural gas exports are expected to reach, uh, you know, 30, uh, sorry, 63 billion Australian dollars this year, says Morris. Um, and uh, one of the uh, one of the quotes amongst everything here uh, was recent developments have have been supportive for the Australia's key commodity prices, and because Australia is a is a commodity seen as a commodity currency, is a boosting commodity prices generally will help um, the uh, or boosts and gives value to the Australian uh, dollar, right? Any commodity currencies. So um, global rising inflation is also likely to encourage an ongoing pro Aussie dollar shift in stance of the Reserve Bank of Australia. So fundamentally, if inflation starts to rise, the, the RBA, the Central Bank of Australia, uh, generally will look to hike rates, right, if it goes above their 2% target. So so um, it says, indeed, the central bank has already ended quantitative easing, which is positive again for the Australian dollar. Uh, Governor Philip Lowe said higher rates in 2022 are now a plausible scenario. So again, hiking rates is generally positive for the uh, for the Australian dollar. The markets pivot towards more aggressive hike expectations have provided the natural source uh, of support for the Australian dollar. And you know what what traders generally don't understand about fundamental analysis as well is it's not going to forex factory and looking at you know news data points and when if it comes out good you buy if it comes out bad you sell fundamental analysis is all about buying the rumor right being ahead of the curve and we right at trading 180 are generally ahead of the curve i'm not saying that we win every single trade that's not what we're talking about but in general we um understand where prices are likely to go uh in the medium to long term based on our fundamental analysis so you know uh we see bank of america tells clients uh they are wary of the risks for a surprise hawkish pivot for the uh, rba sooner than we currently expect so again um there was rumors that they may start to hike sooner rather than later which again which is all bullish right so fundamentally the trade idea was there right to buy the australian dollar and uh, again, going into uh, our um, our trading videos, private trading videos channel. Um, again, for those of you who are in the group, you'll understand. You'll have access to all of these videos. But for those of you who are not watching this on YouTube, um, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, right? All here, all documented, all dated. Um, you can go through each video, and it goes through all the analysis. So a lot of traders will say, "Oh, well, he's calling this on hindsight bias and nonsense." like that you can go back check you know the records all it's all here you know all these videos anyways um and back to this year where are we now uh we are so the 7th of march here we are technical analysis so we do our weekly technical analysis video right here and i've got it already lined up this was i think a 42 minute video i recorded it on the monday um just in case again in case you know i just want to go to this one and then maybe go back to that one and then, you know play the video hi right. everyone uh welcome so from here go back to you know go to 30 i think it's like 38 minute 38 we'd talk about uh, the Aussie dollar. CD Sorry, one sec. That I mean. One second. Let me just mute it. All right. So I'm talking about the CAD Swiss there. Um, buying the CAD Swiss, and you can see from there. And you know, that's where I bought. By the way, I know we're talking about the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, but I was saying about that's where I ended up buying. And you can see where the CAD is. You know, CAD yen is right now. Um, so again, buying commodity currencies. Uh, you know i was uh, i was doing right so here we are so let's get to 38 right so let's look um make sure this is high quality put the quality up to 1080p all right zoom in a bit as well make sure that the screen is full all right so you can see really and listen to i guess the analysis um of what i was talking about with the australian dollar all right i'll press play a CPR as well. We've got daily demand zone. Um, you've got a level right here where you've got multiple touches of that zone. Um, and then you've got 
into that whole area there. Traders would have been getting short, especially understanding um, the risk sentiment around it. It was looking for short trades here, thinking, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you know, risk off means buy the, um, the, the Japanese yen over the Australian dollar. They got short here, all of a sudden, <clears throat> they've been caught, right? Caught on the wrong side. So now it's a case of looking for that, you know, the P and then the, uh, then the R. I think that's decent for a trade. Again, probably go down into, you know, an intraday time frame chart. Yeah, that starts to look decent. So I think any kind of pullback into this zone here, I think is going to be nice for a, uh, for a long trade. Right, so here we are. Calling it basically from that zone. Um, anything within that zone is going to be nice for a long trade. All right, so from the top of that demands um, that zone from 84, the round number, um, you know, coming down into that, right? So uh, from that perspective, let's zoom down, I guess, into you know a bit of an hourly time frame chart. This is where it was. So this is the you know currently this that was the seventh, which was a Monday, and you know waiting for prices to come down into you know that zone, right? And you can see. Prices came down into the zone and eventually actually went for, you know, a thousand pips, I think. Yeah, so I think it was a thousand to the high. Yep, 1,050 pips. Crazy. Now, again, I'm not saying that, you know, I predicted this 1,050 pip move. None, nothing of the sort. Um, but it was just as long as you get the direction correct right if you can get the direction right and you know trail your stops hold on move your move your stops accordingly and understand why prices are likely to go higher in you know the medium to long term um this is what you know uh this is what can happen again nobody knows how far prices will go if prices will go you know uh, that far but it just goes to show that if you get the fundamentals right, if you get the risk sentiment right, if you understand, if you put all the pieces together. Also as well, I did a video uh, recently regarding on, on YouTube, um, regarding the pros and cons of fundamental analysis. One second, I think I go to my YouTube channel, right? It was this one here. Should you apply a Forex fundamental analysis? Uh, the pros and cons. One of the things I say in that video is that, one of the pros of, of, of understanding fundamental analysis is that it gives you the confidence to hold trades, right? Because if you understand where the big money is, is, is going in the medium to long term, then you can capture moves like this, right? You're not going to get, you're not going to take this trade and then get out for maybe just a, a silly two to one or, you know, a one to one type trade. And when I say silly, I mean, it's silly if you're getting out early knowing that there is, you know, potentially a, a fundamental move on the horizon, right? Um, if you don't know any better, then you don't know any better, right? If you just go in for technicals and that's your strategy, then fine. But if you're, you know, if you don't understand the fundamentals and the risk sentiment, then you're always going to just be literally scalping and taking these, um, these, these, um, these trades, not understanding the full potential and giving you the confidence as to why you should want to hold, you know, um, these trades and these uh, trade ideas in an environment. And again, this could have only went for a hundred pips. Might have only went for uh, two hundred or three hundred pips. Nobody knew that it was going to go for a thousand pips. But if you, you know, your trading strategy, you do it accordingly, and uh, whether you trail your stop or <clears throat> however you manage your trade. It is what it is, but um, but yeah, that was pretty much the the, the, the trade idea. Um, it was a capture pain relief, a level CPR trade where you know traders are caught going short here. This is the pain, and then we've got some relief, you know, around here. Understanding the supply and demand equation in and around this zone, and then you know we let the fundamentals and risk sentiment and value uh, take over. Right, it goes where it goes. Nobody can predict the future. It is what it is, and um, you know this could have been you know again for anyone um, who held all the way up at the highs, you know, 
potentially took profit at the highs and bought at the absolute lows you know there was uh, there was a definitely a 1050 pip move in there you didn't have to capture all of it you could have captured maybe a thousand could have captured 300 400 500 even 100 pips but generally you know fundamentally you you know we want it to be long so just breaking down the trade idea um, and uh, you know one that worked out you know really nicely again win rates don't matter if when you're right you can capitalize and make you know 10 15 20 to 1 uh, type trades um, you know losing doesn't doesn't really concern me so much people say oh what's your win rate what's your win rate that's nonsense doesn't matter has you know it doesn't doesn't factor into you know the profitability um, if you understand, if you're looking to hold trades for the medium to long term. term. Anyways, guys, uh, hope that helps. Take care and um, I'll speak to you all soon.